<laughs> okay, we are with the winning team of today's 10th Annual Gander RV 150. And with us is uh, General, General Manager of the Racing, Cody Ifa, the crew chief, Phil Gould, and the winning driver, Ross Chastain. Um, open it up uh, to questions right now for our winning team. And we'll start up here with, uh, with Zach. Zach Sterner, Yellow Pocono Record, Prime Church. Phil, I'll start with you. Uh, as one of the one of only three teams to come to pit road on lap 28 there before the end of stage two, what was the mindset going into that, and how confident did you feel like that was going to set you up for the rest of this race? Well, I mean, just track position is huge. You know, you get back in the pack, and it just slows you down, and you risk tearing your truck up. And I knew after the first stage we had a truck good enough to win. And uh, the way the cautions worked out, we got the stage win at the first stage. And uh, it, was, it was kind of a no-brainer to me, and um, it all worked out. And then, Ross, you said yesterday, like, qualifying has not been a strong suit for you guys. To, and that you were almost concerned that you were too trimmed out. Didn't look like it hurt you at all during the race. It kind of dominated this one. That thing had so much grip, man. It was incredible. They told me it was going to be fine, but um, just just bad race car driver logic is that when it's that fast, it might not have enough grip. So... No, I, um, I mean, even when I felt like I was too free or too tight in the race, we were pulling away. So um, we just pressed the attack all day. Um, just goes to show you don't listen to race car drivers all the time. They probably don't know what they're talking about, me included. Ross, uh, Shane here at the WBGR Sports. So earlier today I saw that Tyler was starting to, is it starting to gain on you just a little bit, and then I noticed you pulled away. And, yeah, what was the key to that success in pulling away from him at the end so that way he wasn't able to catch you? Yeah, it, it was key. I mean, our truck just had so much pace, had so much lap time built into it that it just grip um, and speed. So, yeah, we um, we we started that final stage and, and went as hard as we could and and got a nice little lead and then just wanted to conserve everything. You know, I mean, the truck series is known for late restarts, overtimes, time and time again, right? And so we wanted to one save fuel and save enough tire um, in case I needed to go hard at the end on a restart. And um, you know, he got closer than I wanted to for sure um, but then with 12 or 13 to go had some open track and, and just pushed hard again um, our team owner's motto is press the attack that's what we all live by and I just I mean I, I just pushed harder I just did whatever the truck would do um, and it, it the lap time came right back uh, we gapped back out um, and then we both started saving fuel so it was fun I mean Tyler is um, I'd say like a lot like us and in, in his group where he couldn't start at the beginning of the year because he was too young. And then he had to miss races because of sponsorship. We're all fighting the sponsorship battle. And for me, like, I wouldn't want anybody else to run second to, right? I don't want to lose to anybody, but if i got to pick somebody to run second, like, he's a, such a great kid, a lot like me, Boner on that deal. Like, what they're building over there is a lot like us. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's cool to see new faces and team owners up front in the truck series um, because there's been a group that's had a stranglehold on it for years, and we're happy to be, you know, some of the ones doing it. But Al? Yeah, Ross, Al Pierce is Auto Week. About a year ago at Darlington, things began to change in your life. You had that great run. Harvick said his stupid ass comments. <laughs> things kind of, for you, things began to improve after that. If you, if you ever thought back to what that weekend meant for you and how it got you maybe right here today? I have a lot. It, it really all started um, a few months before that when the talks of, of running those three races with CGR came about, and I didn't think it was real. I didn't understand what, how that would happen. Uh, but the people behind the scenes of Spire uh, were putting it all together, and, and they, they did it for me. I mean, they took me to that next level in a way that no one ever had and no one ever could. I mean, people tried in the past. We tried, but and I'd say before Darlington, it started months before that, um, them helping prepare me. After the race, them grabbing me, TJ right here in the room, TJ Pusher, grabbed me and said, listen to me, don't say anything stupid. He already has, like, just be you, do your interview, but just be you, and don't, don't get caught up in the racing drama. And that was key, um, and we have those heart-to-hearts all the time. A lot, you know, they're not always on pit road right when you get out of a race car, but um, it, those little moments are key. So more than just the Darlington weekend, like, yeah, that, that was a dream come true. But it was all the preparation. That's that's why we get up every day is to fight and to prepare to win. I mean, it, granted, like we have fast race trucks, we have people that believe in each other, so we have the two things in racing you want: belief in each other and speed. And they're so hard to, to get. We're blessed to have it, but it, it all started with preparation years and months ago. 
Any more questions for our race winning team? We'll go to several. Okay, we'll start up here with Chris. Chris Knight, catchfence.com. Cody Al uh, said a couple weeks ago that you guys had a sponsor bail on you guys for the rest of the year and it's kind of put you guys in a tough spot. So how much sponsorship do you guys actually have? Do you have enough to go to the homestead? How dire is your situation? It's always dire, right? I mean, you never have enough. But um, the other night, uh, Al was in town. We sat and talked, and that was a uh, discussion that came up. And, um, I mean, we're going to Homestead. I mean, there's no there's no way around that. Um, both trucks are going to Homestead, 44, 45, running all year. And we're going to continue, hopefully, this dominance, dominance that we have and stay humble with it. Um, are things tight? Yeah, things are tight. There's no doubt in that. But... Um, I think Al Nice likes it that way. Um, he likes to do more with less. And a lot of people use that sentence, you know, do more with less. But he, we actually are doing more with less. You know, we're achieving the things that we want. And, um, you know, we have a partner coming on uh, for the playoffs. You know, we're excited about that's going to see us through the rest of the year. Um, so, and obviously that's going to come out. So, we're just, our goal is to get to the playoffs once he declared. We've done that, I feel like. I feel like we're locked in at this point with the win today. So, um, you know, you'll see, you'll see a sponsor on, on it. Correct. Correct. You'll see. Promise. <laughs> Go down the line, Zach. And then. Ross, kind of along those same lines, uh, there's never a bad time to win, but do you almost worry that you're, that you guys are peaking a little too early um, with so much season left ahead um, and, and obviously the, the goals of winning the championship? Heck no. No, I want to win every one. I want to win everything. So, no, you, uh, I mean, we learned things this weekend, um, and we really put into effect stuff we learned at Kentucky um, and in pre a couple previous races, and, and they kind of worked there, but we fine-tuned them and got them to really work here. Um, and what I, just it made our, we did things leading into this race. It made our truck versatile. Like, it, it could do things that before it would do in a perfect scenario, but if I misjudged the corner by a mile an hour, like, if I felt like I overdrove it by a few feet, it would, it would get sideways or get tight so um we just put together a, a package today that could race and that all came off of races previous so we had to just keep building that notebook um you know we kind of i mean we kind of did go back to basics for this weekend um something that cody was on uh phil and lonnie and i and, and we were just pushing so hard these last few weeks to keep winning um we, you know, I was trying too hard in a lot of times and practices and stuff and, and even in the races. So just back to basics, obviously today the truck was dominant, so it made a lot of things easy. But um, we have to just keep pushing because we have to keep building more and more speed because everybody else is doing the same thing. Go right here. Daryl Kinsey, Jr., WBGR. Ross, this is your third win. It would be the fourth. It wasn't for the win getting taken away in Iowa. At this point, do you feel like the favorite for the championship? No, I still feel like we have room for improvement. I feel like guys have more sponsorship, as Chris alluded to. Um, they have more resources. They have more personnel. Um, but I know, right, it's easy to sit up here after you win a race and say this, but they don't have more heart, and I mean that. I don't say stuff up here for PR. I don't say stuff up here just for any biased reason. Like, I, I truly believe that our group, like, there's there's hardly any, there's just a, one or two guys left back at the shop right now, and these group, the, the whole group, all the Nice Motorsports people are driving home tonight because they don't want to buy we don't want to buy plane tickets because it costs so much. So, no, we should not be the favorite, and I love that. I love the fact like like Cody said about Al, we we thrive on doing more with less and and beating people that we shouldn't beat, and we beat people today. And now it's not to say we're going to go to Eldora and beat them or we're going to go to Michigan and beat them, but um, we just keep keep plugging away and keep building. Hope here's Scott. Scott Walsh from the uh, Scranton Times Tribune. Russ, um, how close those early cautions on those first couple of laps, in particular the, the the spin by Friesen, how close did you, you know, were you to maybe get, you know, getting caught up in that? And then at the end there, I'm sure, you know, talk, talking with uh, Tyler and with Harris, and they're praying for a caution, and I'm sure you're praying, you know, not for one. I, you know, it's funny. When we first fired off, I thought, all right, no cautions, run to the end. And then with like 15 to go, I honestly was – would have been fine with one. We were one lap to the good on fuel, but I thought a caution would put, set us up for overtime to make it. Um, so, no, I, I was fine. I felt confident in our restart ability. Um, I changed up my restarts quite a bit, tried uh, a lot of different things, just trying to to learn about these trucks. And, and you could get wheel spin today, very, very minimal. But I wanted to 
put myself in the, the best. I wanted to learn as much as I could throughout the race for that final one. And I felt as prepared as anything. I, I, I feel like everything that we're doing behind the scenes to, to make these race trucks better and what I'm trying to do during the week to make myself the best race car driver that I can be, right? I still have room for improvement, but I feel like we were as prepared for a late restart um, as anybody. And and um, I didn't see the freezing deal. Um, we had, you know, granted, Austin gave us the outside on the start. We got a good push from fourth place, um, got clear there into one, and I wasn't coming off the top no matter what. I just felt like we were, we'd be in control there. So, um, you know, not to bring him up, but you bring up the guy that won the race last, like I bring up the guy that won the race last year, and you see how he controlled the race, and that's what we're all trying to do. Um, Phil watched the race back this morning. It's That's what you try to do. You, you try, he makes us all better. Granted, I wish he was in the race today. I wanted to race against him. I feel like we could have ran with him. I don't know if we could have beat him. He's really, really good, but – learn from what he did last year and, and try to make it a little bit better. So we have a question in the press box. Austin Morello from the Racing Experts. Ross, this win essentially so, uh, solidifies you in the 2019 truck playoffs, and you've proven yourself as successful at a multitude of different track types throughout the season. Tracks like Eldora, Michigan, Bristol, Mossport are all on the horizon. How does your confidence continue to grow as we continue through the summer months in Fort Homestead? Oh, for sure. It's um, it it's definitely not going down. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what to I don't know what to expect at Eldora. Um, very, I mean, no dirt experience at all. Um, just go try to let these nice guys teach me. They've done it for a few years, uh, but this will be Phil and I's first time going there. So to race. So um, beyond that, um, Michigan, you know, uh, similar to here in in a lot of re regards, and then. Um, Short track program, Iowa Gateway, Bristol, um, we feel really confident about. So we still have room for improvement. Um, we just want more, we want more lap time in our trucks and more speed. Anything else in the press box? Thank you. I didn't Go here the and then up to Chris. Sorry, the middle there. there. From? Yeah, I didn't hear him say that. <coughs> Jeff McConey, the Bottled Up Podcast. I've been talking with some other drivers about their plans to get ready for Eldora. How are you preparing for this race? As you just mentioned, with no dirt experience whatsoever, are you focusing on simulators or some other method? Yeah, I mean, iRacing does a little bit. Um, Josh Wise is race dirt, so talk with him a lot. Talk with Kyle a lot. Um, you know, it's it's. Um, I don't know how you're ever prepared. You're never prepared for any of these tracks. So we'll just go. You know, I mean, build a good race truck that obviously can do the things it needs to on dirt. I, that's something that Cody, we were relying on him a lot for and Lonnie um, to guide us in that direction. And from there, just try not to destroy it, right? And that's goal number one, be there at the end because you can so easily, like, you get on the brakes too hard, it's going to shove straight in the fence and knock the front clip off of it. So um, just learn through practice. I, I don't know. I never – I don't – I don't know how you're ever prepared for any of these places, even coming here. So Eldora is no different for me. Chris? Yeah, I know you guys are, you know, on the business side, things are kind of crazy right now. But on the performance side, is there a weak link? Is there a weakness? Is there something? Better than last week. I mean, you're always looking for more speed, like Ross said. I mean, that's a never-ending battle. And we're kind of doing a lot of behind-the-scenes work. If behind the scenes, which is all here with us at the racetrack, <laughs> to try and make sure that, you know I mean, that we have what we need to run like we, sh we need to when, when the chase comes. Like Ross said, Chicago and Kentucky, we kind of had some off weeks, if you consider them off, fourth and seventh. But we knew we weren't taking our best truck. We were trying to set up to, to build trucks um, to set ourselves up for the chase. So just always looking for more speed. You can't never have enough. How many trucks do you think we'll have so far? We'll have enough. <laughs> <laughs> There's an arsenal being prepared. Promise you. Go to Alan over here. <laughs> Ross, who sells a blow up watermelon, and how far are we going to take this? It gets bigger every time. Yeah, no, literally, fit, literally bigger, physically bigger. Um, Emily got that. Yeah. Our, our tire girl. Um, do you know where she got it from? I do not. I, I, th I, do. I think Academy. At Academy. So um, I lost my patch. Uh, yeah. So she um, she got it after Gateway, and she said she just saw it and had that. Knew she had to have it and said we were going to take it back to Victory Lane. Of course, then we go a couple of weeks, and I'm like, gosh, dang, we're preparing for Victory Lane way too much. Like, <laughs> I don't know about all this. So um, with my family, we're the ones that bring the watermelons, right? And so we, we have always had a deal where we don't go get the watermelons until the race is over. So then they have to run to the camper at my fifth wheel here or the hauler, wherever the watermelons are at, and get them. 
Um, so it's really cool. Normally when they when I receive the watermelons on the front stretch or victory lane, whoever brings it to me is out of breath because they had to run a long way. <laughs> um, so this was uh, Emily, and uh, that's so cool that, that, you know, the whole team's buying into this, right? How can you not smile when you eat a slice of watermelon? How can you not smile when you see me out throwing a beach ball into the stands after we win a race with a giant watermelon? So I'm glad that everybody's getting to live the watermelon life with us. We launched a freaking merch brand named MelonManBrand.com. I mean <laughs> – how cool is that? How can you not smile if you're going to put on a watermelon hat? Um, it's just, um, I, I've always, eighth generation farmer, lived the watermelon life, and now I hope NASCAR Nation and everybody here can too. Okay, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Or else has got to get ready for qualifying on the Monster Energy Series. Congratulations, guys, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you all. Thanks. Okay. Anytime.